Good evening, everyone. Hello, welcome. We are here at uh, Dave's Kitchen. I'm going to teach you a little uh, trick with onions that David taught me when you're cutting your onion. So first, you can cut it in half just to make sure it's flat. And then David usually uses half an onion at a time. Actually, leave that little stalk right on there and then cut toward it because then if you cut that stalk off, you know how you the onions make people cry? It's mainly the part that makes people cry is right near that stalk. So if you cut it this way, it holds it all together. Good. There you go. And then and then crisscross it. Yeah. And then you so then you have this is like that would be a perfect onion pot. Yeah. And then you and then you go across. And then cross. And she's gonna dice those so up. An easy way to dice onions. And we've got uh, on tap today some shrimp, which is sitting in a little bit of filtered water. Oh, see, they're starting to turn pink. Well, we're, we're turning them up at level three, and we're going to throw those onions in on top of them. Even with the skins on and everything? Yep. Making what is called a roux. And this is how to make a roux. And we're taking shrimp that are absolutely uncooked in the shell. Watch what we do here. So I just throw it in. Throw it in. Sarah. Great. And we're going to cover that up. David believes in always covering your pans when you cook because then you keep the heat in and it cooks faster and it saves energy. Okay. It's always about saving energy. Yeah, we're going to get that up to a level uh, level four. We're going to kind of flash cook that. Not to overcook the shrimp. You just want to make sure it's These pink. shrimp have been cleaned, right? Like, oh, yeah. Sure. They're as clean as they were when they came out of the Indonesian slave camps that they people are harvesting. So David's from. relying on the Indonesian slave slave people to clean the guts. I rinse them off when I when take them out of the freezer, and then I leave them in a little bit of water, and then we uh, go ahead and and get them pink. Well, I'm gonna de poop them and everything, yes. But the thing is, I'm actually pulling the shell off. Right now, whatever's in them is inside of them. And the shell is protecting the, the, uh, the existence of whatever it is, even if it is the vein. That, that vein that you don't want to see when you're eating a shrimp. And you certainly don't want to eat the, the head. So what I do is I take it and put a little bit of fresh water in it, cool it off once it's done. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of kind of al dente. But okay. you got to cook them. Yeah. Now you can buy cooked shrimp right now yeah. on the market. They are available. And this eliminates this phase of the cooking stage. But this is kind of the fun stage where you actually have to clean them with your fingers and it's kind of, it creates kind of a weird moment because if you're, this has happened to me before, believe it or not, if you're kind of a ticklish uh -huh. and you're playing with shrimp and they're lukewarm, uh -huh. it creates kind of a ticklishness. It's weird. It's like your fingers start to tickle. So if you're into it as much as I am. Okay, obviously you're not. <laughs> if you're as ticklish as you are, huh? Anyway, we've got a lot of people in here who don't realize that uh, I am perhaps the most evolved human being on earth. Wait, don't do that Put to that person. I know. And these people who are reprobates, Neanderthals, who've never cooked in their life, have no idea what, it's, what it is to see a man who cooks and enjoys it. So, okay. I love food. That's what got me into cooking originally. But we are right now on a pretty high flame, cooking that shrimp, getting that it roux, it basically a roux, and I'm adding that roux to the egg yolk. Believe it or not, whatever that sh shrimp is cooking in, once I pull those shells off, that's going into the yolk and in the mix of the eggs. So I so add the, the roux is going I, into the, the roux is going into the eggs. Yeah, that's what makes this uh, an odd. It's, that's it, what makes it so wet. Yeah, which she hates. She hates wet eggs. Eggs, but I cook with a high flame. Yeah, you got a high flame going on there. Okay, you should be ready in about. It's almost done. You see, if you could see it right now, you can almost see it. It's almost cooked. Well, they can't see it. Oh, maybe they can't. If I could just it, get. Right. Well, this is as close as I can get, but I'll show it to you. It's almost cooked. It's steaming right now. Now you don't want to put too much water in there because remember, she said she doesn't like a wet omelet. Okay. Well, I guess as long as you cook the eggs until the wetness goes away. Okay. Well, we're almost done here. 
The onions are in there just for flavoring because it adds the onion taste to the roux. Now you can cook with a, an herb and I recommend dill weed. Oh, dill weed is good for shrimp. You can throw dill weed in there right now if you want. You can also use garlic powder and I'm going to throw a little garlic powder in there. Give it about five shakes of dill weed. Put this in front. I've got some salt substitute items like Mrs. Dash. You can cook with Mrs. Dash. Some organic garlic nuggets, which I have. Garlic in there. Okay, okay I'm going to turn that flame down, guys. Go ahead and turn that flame off. Your shrimp is done, by the way. So he actually turns off the flame, but the hot stove is so high, it's yeah. cooling down. So. Well, if you're dealing with an electric oven, it cooks for a little while in the, the juice. Okay. Now we're going to start with the asparagus. I'm going to pull that off the burner and set it over there, let it cool off. I'm going to take this, uh, this asparagus and rinse it off under the sink. And we're going to show you how I, I cook the asparagus. And this is cooked rather quickly in a microwave dish. So the thing about asparagus is the bottom you don't really want. So you take it, your fingers like that, snap it. There's a snap point. There we go. It'll, be, it'll reach a snap point naturally. Your snap point is where your asparagus is tender. You just throw those in there like that. You can do a couple at a time if you want. Give them a half cut. And these will be laid, once they're cooked, they're going to be pre-cooked in the microwave. And you're not going to believe how little time it takes to cook these asparagus. Yes, this was rinsed off. Yes, I thoroughly rinsed it. You can watch the recorded video if you just came in. All right, so we're going to add the top of the microwave dish with a little bit of filtered water. Just a touch, about four or five tablespoons, and some salt. Now, you can track me with this if you want. Okay. Over to his. Going in the microwave, and we're going to go for two minutes on high. All right. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right, everybody. So, yes, David does microwave food. I don't mind doing a little bit of microwaving. Sorry, you can That's cool. that. Yeah. Two minutes now, if we walk away from the microwave, we'll be less radio frequency. <laughs> but I mean, we do a microwave because it's essential. It saves energy and I've never died. I've been cooking with a microwave since 1981. Thank you, Dave's Cooking Show gives me a thumbs up on the cooking show, right on. All right, so we're ready to pull that shrimp off. I'm going to lift that cover. That shrimp is all done. And reach in there. It's pretty hot still. So I'm going to actually put a little bit of filtered water on top of there to cool it off. The touch. I want it to be lukewarm. Okay. And I'm going to pull off the tail and proceed to, uh, thank you, take a section of, of the plate and make it my clean shrimp section. Tail pulls off nicely. My hands are clean, by the way. I've totally washed them. So you won't be eating my hand tonight. Of course, you probably won't be eating this at all anyway, so. Well, she rolls her eyes occasionally, and it's like an autonomic nervous system thing. <laughs> they say you roll your eyes all the time, Sarah, so don't worry about it. It's just, this is how they troll us. They are constantly rolling, they're saying this just to troll us, it's a simple thing. Okay, this is pretty hot still, because after all these shrimp were just cooked, so if you are burning your fingers, you may want to wait till it cools off, but as you can see, I have fingers of steel. Fingers of steel. Okay, that asparagus is done, but you want to leave it in the container 
and let it cook for a little bit on its own heat. Alrighty? Okie dokie. Cook on the big stove tonight. I've got a big hooper back here. Oh, I haven't made my coffee. All right, let's do this. I'm going to start this pan up at level three in the back while I continue to peel my, my beautiful shrimp. And all the peelings can go in your compost heap, so that's cool. Now this shrimp is uh, fantastic, and you don't have to cut it up because you'll cut it up when you mix up the eggs. And I made this for Sarah on Sunday because it is a day of rest. That's when I cook the most, is a day of rest. The last thing you want is a shell in there. So if you guys are buying cooked shell, you are way ahead of the game. Just go ahead and get your onions glazed like I just did. Good to go. All right. Getting that pan in the back hot, I'm gonna add some clarified butter to the actual pan. You can add butter from a stick, you can add any kind of oil, preferably non-hydrogenated. Okay? Let me move this over here. No, I, I like the cooking here. I'm a cook. So you prefer to get non-hydrogenated oils whenever you buy oil. And try to stay away from canola because it is heavily GMO'd. The oil of choice for most restaurants right now is either safflower or sunflower. That's the most, uh, and you can same with your mayonnaise. If you get your oils with uh, that, you're free of GMOs. GMOs are not possible with safflower and sunflower in general because the bees are all essentially living and they cannot have herbicides or pesticides around them. So if bees can handle it, humans can handle it. All right. Use olive oil, that's a very good one, Busy. I don't live in a mansion, I live in a very humble, modular home, and I'm very happy. Yeah, extra virgin, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so we've got about, I'd say $2 of the shrimp there. We've got about a dollar's worth of asparagus. They're already cooked. I'll keep that cover on though to further cook them. We got about three tortillas, which are about 10 cents a piece. Pan that's getting hot here. I'm gonna kick that up to level five. And I want everyone to know that I use a, uh, I use a, a, a wooden spatula when I cook. It's essentially use a wooden spatula because if you're using a plastic one, this meal, if you're using a stickless fry pan, this meal is super easy. But I don't like cooking with stickless fry pans because of all the BPA fears and all the question about the toxins and Teflon, etc. So, thank you. Bon appetit, Willie. Hello, Willie Pickles. Uh, we are going to look at a situation where a stainless steel pan on high heat is going to stick big time. Uh, no surprise visits or a surprise arrest. Yes and a possible stocking charge. You can tell that to that person. That's right. All right, let's see what we got here. We got some clarified oil or butter. There we go. Only the best chefs cook with clarified butter. As you can see, I simply use the best for my omelets. But you can use olive oil. I think I will use a little olive oil in here because this is gonna kind of a, clarified butter is pretty fattening. Okay, we throw that in there, and it squirts around. Okay, now we'll get our eggs cut. Tonight I'm using a half a dozen eggs, which rounds this out at about a dollar, because you can get two, you can get a, a dozen eggs right now for about two bucks. Look around. All right. So an easy way to break eggs, Sarah's uh, always had a situation where you need a heavy eye knife and something really sharp, like that. Just make a quick hit like that. You do 
not want the shells in there. It makes for a very bad omelet. It's like, oh, what's this crunchy stuff? And what's this crunchy calcium that we're eating today? It's eggshell a la mode. Okay, that's getting super hot. I can smell that clarified butter already. Okay, you're wondering what I'm going to do with this, right? Well, this is the best part. I'm going to take that spatula. You can take a regular fork and do this. Mix that egg up like that. Pour all of that shrimp in there that you just pulled in there from your, your pan. Anything else goes in the other pan. Are you with me? I'm going to get that rolling out here. All right. Get that little mix. It's kind of weird. It's shrimpy and weird. Okay. Pour it right on top of there. Start stirring and stir to your heart's content. Now, again, if you have a stickless pan, it's no big deal. Uh, I don't see any fat gut here, buddy. Yeah, I don't have a fat gut. I don't like what you just said. And you're on warning, Anne, for, for muting any minute now. Keep stirring. Keep that flame high. What you're making essentially right now is scrambled eggs. I know. You're saying, well, this isn't right. This is supposed to be an omelet. I know. I know. Cover it up. Let it cook some more, but keep stirring it. Yeah, I'm scrambling it. I know I get criticism. I, I, I realize that. That's why I have my wooden spatula. There we go. Nice. I don't want it to stick. And now take, take the spatula and break up the... Uh, Break up the uh, the shrimp as you go. You, this way you can break them up and have smaller pieces. Looking good. You don't want it to be uh, dry. You want it to be kind of runny when you put it in your tacos. These aren't tacos. These are tortillas. All right. I'm ready to go back into that other pan. Switch pans. And put it right back in the other pan that you made your other dish on. So it's kind of like a barely cooked scramble. Cover it up and turn it down to low. In the meantime, take and degloss this. The remainder of your uh, your scrambled eggs, if you will. Now the eggs have not set, mind you. It's still in the scrambled state. You want to get all that out of there and into the pan. So we're deglossing the recipe and taking all of that good food and putting it right back in the, in the slurry. All right, that's on low. Now in this particular case, you have to wash the pan. But if you have an extra pan, you certainly don't need to do that. Okay. You're done. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put this same pan right back on the stove. I'm going to rinse it off with a little bit of fresh water, filtered. That's going right back on the stove it was on. 
Meanwhile, the other one can be on the below. All right. Okay, I'm starting that up again at level five. I'm getting heat back in there. We're doing pretty good on time. I've got my cheese. We're going to go with a standard medium cheddar. All right. I'm going to do a little slicing here. Now remember, your asparagus is still perfectly uh, fine. It's sitting at its own heat from the microwave, and that's still hot. We have a cheese slicer. Why don't I do this the right way, like a professional? You don't want to put plastic in your food. If you find you've got plastic in your food, that would be... Do I seem nervous? I'm only under the clock here. Is that all right? Okay, I've got a nice hot pan going back there. Hello. I'm going to pull off about, I would say, six slices of cheddar. Everyone loves cheese, you know, so you know, maybe you go with uh, maybe seven or eight, depending on how much you love cheese. All right, cool. Isn't this exciting? Hello. You don't want to slice it this way because you can slice your hand off, your skin off. That would not be good. All right. I don't have a hairnet. This is my hair, man. Tiptoes, is that you? Nothing's raw, man. <laughs> okay. Ready to go with the oil on the pan? Oh, that's nice. Nice. Okay. Let's slap a little bit of garlic powder down on that. That really adds the, the taste of the oil that's going to hit your, your tortillas. There you go. All right. I'm going to lay the tortillas down. Like that. I'm going to give them a little bit of a, a spin here. Hang on. A little spin right there. Let them, let them crisp up on one side like that. And you can keep this at level five. All right. Oh, believe me, I'm making three omelets in the pan ready to go in the hopper. I and mean, this is amazing stuff. All right. This takes a little time. The, uh, the Mexican people, they do this fairly quickly on a hot grill. Give it a quick turnover. Okay, we're going to add, just roll that over to the side like that. Do another one. Get it in there. You want to soak up the oil. Get it underneath. Okay. And give it a little time so it cooks one side on one side only. That's going to be the side on the inside. So when you when you fill these things, they'll be on the the outside, which is laying down the grill right now, will be the inside. I want to give it a little bit of, of cooking, a little caramelization. The whole wheat tortilla. And you can use the wooden spatula to flip. Okay? Just so it's kind of a little bit golden brown. And we'll do it with the final one right there. And as you can see, I've got my cheese in my hand right here. I think you're getting the idea of what we're doing here, I hope. If you figured it out, you're a genius. We're making an omelet that is a low upkeep, a very low upkeep. Yeah. No one's ever cooked by the, this method. This is perhaps the first time it's ever been. We're making a, a shrimp asparagus omelet with cheese. All right, we're there. You don't want to leave that on the grill too long. Okay, let me show you how I lay these out. All right, one's a little wetter than the other. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Okay. We're almost there, folks. We're dialing in on this meal. Okay. 
Get my cheese and stain it there. I'm going to take a perforated spoon, grab some of the eggs, the dry side of that tortilla I just flipped over. I'm going to position that right there. I'm going to take some of this nice already pre-cooked but not too dry egg mix. Put it right in there, right in the center. And I'm going to do it to three of the omelets. Okay, there's another one. And I'm going to use the third one. That. I'm going to turn my flame down to simmer. Very low flame now. You want to be on a low flame, folks. You don't want to be sticking any of this food. too oily. All right, now I'm going to position the three omelets side by side, almost like a burrito, okay? One, two, three. There we go. Okay, perfect. Take your asparagus right there. Lay them in there and nestle them into the center of the egg. We have enough asparagus to go around for all three omelets. Okay, remember your temperature is at simmer, very low. All right, take your cheese and layer your cheese on top. There you go. Two, three. Three. One, two, three. We got cheese, asparagus, all layered on top. Take this entire dish. Give it a little shuffle. Make sure everything's all in line. Okay. Roll over your, your tortillas slightly. All right. And then take and top it off with whatever shrimp you have left. So the shrimp will be actually showing on the outside of your meal you present. Now judges, today I've presented a egg with asparagus, shrimp, fusion dish. I'm capping it off. I'm going to take a little bit of the water of the asparagus and just drizzle it over the top to keep this moist. And I'm going to sit that on simmer. And we're done. Dinner will be served. From Dave's kitchen to your your palate. You guys like to look at my betta fish? Sarah brought a betta fish home. I'm kind of becoming fond of it. He's not in the in the view right now, but I'm an alpha male, as you know, so seeing a betta fish kind of makes me wonder, you know, what, what makes a betta tick? There you go. Hey, beta fish, are you there? Yeah, you can see it in the background. That's cool. All right, so that was it, Dave's Kitchen. We've got uh, $5 ingredients. When this thing is done, the, uh, the, the entire base stays fairly nice because it doesn't overheat on the pan. And the steaming action of whatever is in that pan seals in all the flavors and the cheese melts over the shrimp, the eggs firm up, and you've got your very, a very nice, easy to serve omelet with a, a wonderful wheat tortilla that's been uh, caramelized on the grill. I'm an alpha male. Uh, I'm a person who has the, the intensity of a person, a gung-ho kind of person. I'm a get things done kind of guy. And you're an alpha male too. I like stuff. Okay, good for you. Now you can do this with shrimp. You can do this with catfish. But you got to pre-cook the fish and you got to pre-cook the asparagus. 
But when you have those ingredients sitting on the side, they're so easy to throw in an omelet. It's just boom, 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 and you're done. And this is a real balanced meal. The asparagus uh, is a diuretic, so it'll help lower the amount of water in your body. So you'll feel slimmer after eating it. The shrimp is a high protein, very good quality glycosamine you get from the actual shrimp. Glycosamine is something that helps your, the sinews of your body, like the muscles and ligaments and tendons. And the, the, obviously, uh, the eggs are full of protein. So, hey, you're there. And all these three little omelets are all packed, ready to go, served up right, really nice. So you can just serve them up to whoever wants to eat one. And I think it's a, perhaps one of the easier meals I've made, even though it may seem complicated to you. If you're using a stickless fry pan, this whole thing is as easy as can be. What you saw me do with this, the cleaning of the fry pans and all that, that's because I really don't want to eat PCBs, you know? All right, as far as GMOs are concerned, thank you, Guest 951. Uh, we are not buying GMO wheat products. So that was a, a wheat product that does not have GMOs in it. Uh, if you are getting uh, products like oils, remember I said early on in this video, safflower and sunflower are not GMO. So look for those. Olive is a good one that's not GMO as well. Uh, if you're buying margarine, stop. Tell your family we're never going to get margarine again. Because margarine is a really bad product in general. Because it is made from toxic ingredients like uh, turpentine and cottonseed. And it's just, oh, there he is. My bed is saying hi to you. It's absolutely disgusting. Margarine is the worst thing for you. At It's, it's hydrogenated. You, you'd be feeding yourself crap. And don't do that. Uh, I want to recommend, too, that you use butter. Because butter happens to be, as Julia Child said, a little piece of heaven on earth. Butter really is. It adds so much to the flavor of your omelet. And... It's going to be an awesome meal. Hey, I'm going to sign off and I'm going to get the, go the show going in just a second.